So Miniware sent me this MDP M01 smart digital monitor. This goes with the power supply they sent me previously, which I did a review on, which is quite an exciting review, that one. I'll link it up top there and down below. You definitely want to go and check that out. It even involves magic smoke. It's pretty good, that one. So this will work on that unit, which is great. The wirelessly connect. But that's not the only thing they sent me. They also sent me this. The MDL L1060 DC electronic load. Now this is brand new. It's only just been released. In fact, this video is coming out the day after it's released, I believe. Or the day of release, even depending on where you are in the world, I suppose. So this is like brand new, not even available yet anywhere else. I'm obviously one of the first people to see this thing. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I haven't played with these yet myself. I've got no idea. I need to actually unpack these things and have a look at them myself. We're both discovering these at the same time. So I'm going to look at the MDP M01 first. Now these have been out for a little while. I know they're actually planning on doing a, like a range of products. I mean, it's announced in the, I think it's a manual for this thing. It mentions the, the power supplies. You've got the 905, 906. The 906 is the one I've got. 905 is also available. And now the electronic load, which has just been released. I think there's some other things they're looking at maybe doing as well. I think they were planning a signal generator as well. I think some of like that. Function generator. So there's a few things planned for these. So that's just a nice packaging thing. You find the back there. And here is the top piece, the display, and a interface cable. So here's the power supply they sent me previously, which I did a review on. So like I said, do uncheck that out. So it's quite a uh, interesting review. <laughs> I'll see one of the more interesting ones I've done. Miniware, the build quality is incredible. It's all metal casings and stuff like that. It's really nice build quality. So here's the power supply, so I did a review on. And this sits on top. Like that, it's all meant to stack, and you can tip this up. And you can use this as a display for the power supply. You can power it from this as well. I'm not going to be talking about this today, not really. I may show it. I may check the connections and stuff out. But you want to look at this. So the idea of this thing is you've got some controls on it, menus and, and values, and you've got these five buttons. It connects by Wi-Fi, and you connect up to six devices to it, so you can control six devices from this screen. That's that quick look at that. Let's look at the electronic load. So you think about this, you can have this thing running with the power supply, which I've got here, and electronic load. And you can test the power supply with its own electronic load. Potentially, I suppose you could. It's got a built-in battery as well. And brightly, it's got a small battery in it, so you can actually run it without a power supply for a little while. For a short time, I think. And it's got all these standard options. And it can do 60 volts at 10 amps, 100 watts max. So 10 volts to 10 amps, max, I suppose you could say. This is very heavy as well, it's quite surprising. It's a big block. That's surprisingly weighty. So there it is, there's the actual unit. That's the bottom. This one doesn't have feet on it. I guess it's so new they didn't actually put the feet on. <laughs> they missed that bit. Uh, obviously this is a review item, so, you know, I'm sure your production units will have feet on it. Obviously, the save us overlooked that piece on the preview unit. That's fine. So this will stack on top, just like that as well, like I did on the power supply. If you want to have them stacked up, you can do that. Got a control on the side, plus and minus. You look inside here. That looks like copper heat sinks. It's probably why it's so heavy. It's just a big block of copper in there with all that heat sinking in there. It's also got a DC 5 volt 2 amp jack on there, USB C jack. Got three buttons on the front, and they, they love using that little display, don't they? So set menu and run lock. I think there's got dual functions, so you can hold them down to do other things as well. On the side, you got the load outputs, so positive and negative, and you also got a sensing as well. So the idea of having the sense lines is that you can run sensing to your power supply. In. So this is obviously the electronic load. So if you hook up this into your power supply or whatever your device you're testing is, presumably power supply, you can hook up those lines at the other end of the cable. So sometimes you want to see the power supply saying you want to run those up to the power supply end of the cables to get the most accurate response. And you've got a couple of fans in there and this little grill. Let's look at powering this thing up. So this display comes with this little cable which allows you to hook it up to the power supply. All right, so if you want to run off the power supply, you can plug it into that and use it on that, okay? Um, which is fine. You think, okay, there should be a plug on the back of this as well, shouldn't there? Um, there's no plug here. Why is there no plug here? Hey, Miniware, shouldn't there be a socket here like you've got in the power supply so you can plug this into your load instead? I would have thought that would be a good idea. 
No, it's a USB micro socket, so I'll just plug a USB micro cable into that, it's not a big deal. I just thought if you've got that cable set up on here, you'd have it universal so it works on both units. Bit of an oversight. Alright, so let's just plug the power into this. There you go. Screen. Love the way it folds up. That's nice. Let's move the camera out so you can get a better shot. Alright, so there's that unit. There's the load. Let's figure out how to turn the load on. Hmm. There we go. It's not obvious. You push those two buttons at once. Yeah. I don't know why. So there's the load. Now these aren't connected together right now. We have to figure out how to do this. Config. Confirm auto match. That one. Okay. Menu. I have to hold it down. That. There we go. Right. That's set up. It's a bit of a messing around, but it's now done. So I should be able to do exactly the same thing with the power supply and get that configured as well. So there's the power supply. Now one thing I've noticed is that there does seem to be an inconsistency about how you turn these things on. The display turns on immediately as you plug in power. The power supply you have to push the long run lock button and on the load you have to push the set and menu button at the same time. It seems a bit inconsistent anywhere. Uh, maybe if this is on the run lock you should make this one the run lock button as the power supply instead of those two. Maybe there's a reason for it but having them all work exactly the same way I think could be a, a bit of a benefit. So this is now looking for matching on here as well. So you see if I can find the um, menu. There it is there. Set. There we go. Exactly the same. Let's peel this off, shall we? So now both units are connected up to this. And it's recognised them all. It's got different addresses. So I should now be able to control these two devices with this screen. Or vice versa. I think I can actually do stuff on these devices instead of with the screen. You see as I'm changing the load, it's changing up here at the same time. So you're pushing a set button over here which changes the thing I'm trying to change by really small increments and I think I don't remember how that was now there was a little trick to doing it faster I don't remember what it was there was a high speed changing we've got the electronic load set up 2.14 amps and here we can change it to oh, that's the wrong thing here we can change it to All right and here we can change it with the digits on the little wheel on the side so we changed here that's far easier to change the values constant current mode back, forward, backward, on off I could turn the load on off with that load is now on load is now back off I want to go to the power supply instead back device alright so I've hooked up a cable between the power supply and the electronic load so I'm going to use the power supply to test the electronic load what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so you've got devices, you each time you push device it, it jumps to the next device in the chain, right? So as I've only got two, it's just toggling between the first and second device. So whichever one's got a darker hitting, I suppose, is one which is active. And then you can push modify, that allows you to change and modify those sections. If you want to jump between, say, in this case, volts and amps, you can do it with these buttons here. Now, they kind of do the same thing in this case, because it's forwards and backwards, but there's only two options, so doesn't even matter. Then I'll set this up for 4 volts, 3 amps on the power supply. So we'll turn the power supply on. And it's graphing the power supply output. And we're going to go back, and we're going to go back to the electronic load, which it shows you here as well. It just shows L1060 and P906 just up here. And it says P906 is on constant voltage mode. Then we've got the L1060, which is currently off. So modify, turn it on. That's now loading. Now I've got this set to constant current mode at 2 amps. So the load is consuming 2 amps, the power supply is generating 2 amps, and that is looking fine. And it is indeed graphing it. So if I wanted to go and change the values here, let's go to the, there and reduce the current. You see the graph is changing there. Now this is limited to 3 amps I think, I've got it set to. So I should go to 3 amps and top out. Here it is. Topped out 3 amps and turned off. Interestingly it's also stopped me from adjusting the load. 
as well. So I'll turn the load back off. It's got a flashing indicator here. So I can't adjust the value. Can't turn it off. Can't go back. Right. The load is sensing a problem because it's flashing. Is that why? It wouldn't let me do anything because of that. Let's go back here. Yeah. So when the load locked itself out with the error, because it detected that it dropped off, it locked up the controls up here. So I couldn't do anything up here, which is surprising. Now, although I've got these things stacked on top of each other, this could be somewhere else, right? I could have this at the back of the bench like this. Or these could be on a shelf and this could be right in front of you, you could use the controls on this. It's because it's wireless, right? It uses Wi-Fi. So they've got stacked up on top of each other. You don't need to actually need to do that. I mean the same thing goes for the power supply obviously, right? And I've still got the plug hanging off the back. Because I'm not using it right now. So the load's currently off. We'll turn the load back on again now, sit back at two amps. That's doing its thing. Let's go back, let's go to the power supply. Let's modify the power supply values. Let's go to a higher current. Eight amps, right? Go back, load is now cooling a little bit more. Go back to the load, modify the current, and we'll crank it up a bit. And you can see the graphing of the load difference. Six amps, so there's 7.9 amps. Cool, so that's, it's actually quite nice using the display instead of the other controls, it's actually easy to use. So we go back. Other things we can do actually, go back to this one. We've got info which gives you more information about what's going on. It's got a voltage set point, current set point, voltage out or in, I suppose, current, power, so voltage out, current out, power out, voltage in, current in, over current protection, over voltage protection, temperature, lock state, and status. So obviously the power supply is doing constant voltage and the load is doing constant current. But we could actually tell the load to do something different. This is more. What else is there? Half current is off. We've got more stuff in here. Different tabs. It's got a cycling mode. Factory testing. Over current protection. Testing. Internal resistance. So do config. This is that thing we looked at before for doing natural wireless settings in here. So I'll sort of show it again. So you've got the loads and then the power supply. You can actually reorganise these as well, you can change the sequencing. I think you have to do it on a computer though, if you want to reorganise and do it in a different order. But it can be done. Load, forward, I'll turn it off first, forward, let's change this mode here. Constant power, 5 watts, turn it on, it's down there, draw constantly 5 watts, it'll do whatever it needs to do that, based on the voltage and the current that's supplied. That's drawing 5 watts, the power supply is generating 5 watts. So that's working alright. Turn it off. What else can we do? Constant resistance. 1.5 ohms. So that works out as being about 10 watts at this particular voltage level. And also you can change the values. You can increase the resistance, the current will go down. go overloaded that's fine I've loaded the load well the load sends the power supply cut off so we can do stop on that and then we can wind it back up again so considering that you got a little power supply a DC electronic load and a control screen which does have other features as well that's not a bad little bench setup constant voltage and the constant voltage yet and what we'll do is this will adjust the current to try and keep the voltage at that set point. So it's putting down to 3 volts right now. Power supply is set at 3 point, well I think it's 4 volts wasn't it? Yeah, set at 4 volts. So it's drawing a lot of current to make that voltage drop through these cables to get 3 volts and that's drawing 24 watts right now, 8 amps to do that. So, you know, a little test bench, I mean this big, you know, I can fit in a pair of my hands, alright? And you've got a power supply and a DC electronic load and a display and control unit. 
I mean, I've, yeah, I've got three cables going to it. I could do the same thing with two cables. If I unplugged this USB cable here, I could use a little short cable from the power supply to power the screen instead. You know, it'd just be two wires for three units, which is not too bad. And like I said, this can be remote. You don't have to have this here. You can put this somewhere else. So thanks like Mini Wear for sending these to me at no cost. Pretty amazing what you can develop. I mean, the build quality on these things is brilliant. The metal, they all feel really nice. Obviously designed to work together. But I think this was a missed opportunity here with that power cable for this thing, you know. That would have been nice to be able to plug it into the power supply and the load as well. It's a shame it doesn't plug into the load as well. Because that would have been good, because then you could use this head with the load with one cable. And there may be a reason for it, maybe a technical reason, but I think it could have been possible. So there'll be links down below for this thing. If you want more information about these, or it may be more review stuff, I'm sure this does a lot more things than I haven't actually covered. If you don't have any test gear, like a little power supply or a little DC electronic load, these would actually do you quite well. This tiny little setup doesn't take much space at all, it's to fit on a shelf. That can do 100 watts max. Power supply 300 watts, that's incredible. You'd be really pushing it, I think, though, but yeah, I'm sure it's capable. I did test the power supply and did all that sort of stuff, so it can do it. If you ain't got much room and you need a few bits of test gear, which you use occasionally, just a little tinker with things and you want to see what's going on, I think this is brilliant. You know, Miniware is incredibly good at making really small bits of equipment. A simple user interface. I, mean, I haven't read a manual. So I think in summary, there's a few things which I think were missed opportunities. So that power cable plugging into the load, that's a missed opportunity. The difference in user interfaces, I think it's also a bit of a missed opportunity for turning things on and off. Well, I don't even know how to turn it off now. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember to turn this thing off now. Yeah, you know, you pull the power plug out. I don't remember. On and off switch, you know, like an on off button or something which says hold to turn on or off or something would be nice. That part's a bit confusing the way that I could turn this thing on by pushing the run lock button and this one I push a set of menu button to turn it on. A little bit odd. I unplugged the USB cable from the display, so the display is now connected up to the power supply instead. Now, how do I turn the power supply back off? I don't know. How do you turn the power supply off? I've got no bloody idea. <laughs> so I just unplugged the cable from the power supply, plugged it back in again, so the power supply is off, and you push the run button, and it turns the whole unit on at once. So that part works beautifully when you've got that configuration. One thing both these devices do when you turn them on and off is the connectors light up. Let's try that. So I unplugged power from this thing and like I said it's got a battery built into it and it stayed turned on. So I had to figure out how to turn it off. So I've done that now. But to turn it on, like I said, on the power supply, the one button turns it on. Doesn't turn it on this one. Sit button doesn't turn it on. Mini button doesn't turn it on. Both of those two buttons turn it on, which isn't obvious. I think the run button should be the main power button. But like I say, this is running off internal battery now. So if you need to use this portable, you can do that. You can just plug the cables in and run it as a headless unit and run it as a portable load. That's brilliant. No one else does this. <laughs> to turn it off again, you have to hold those two buttons again. There we go. Not as intuitive as the power supply. So power supply, and you just push the run button, and it turns it on. Right? Why doesn't the load have that? Why isn't it exactly the same? And that's why I've had to turn this off again. I'm not so sure. So that's set in menu. Should we try that on this one? Yes. Okay. So that's the same two buttons to turn it off, at least. So there's a consistent way of turning them off, not a consistent way of turning them on. Then I, I think I prefer to see a different way of doing that. So thanks Mini Wear for sending these to me at no cost. Check out links down below. Check out my other videos down below for videos such as the power supply review and other things I do like repairs. Subscribe link over there if not subscribed yet and click the bell icon to get notifications. And there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel. Tell me to buy a bit of test gear and things like that to fix and do other videos about. Catch you later.